Hi, this is Hugo here with Avid, and today we're going to be looking at some of the new features in the browser of Tor 2.0. The new browser in Tor 2.0 has been re-engineered from the ground up to increase performance and to include some of the features that were requested by our users. So here, let's take a look. If you're new to Torque, the browser is located in the lower section of the Torque interface. The first column on the left side of the browser is called the index, which is used for navigating your system when locating and loading songs onto the decks. Clicking any of the headings will display its content in the file list section right here on the right side of the browser. Now clicking on the plus sign to the left side of any of the headings reveals the folders below it, just like this. So here, let's take it from the top. The first thing we notice is that the snapshot section now lives here within our index. This allows for a much faster, more efficient way of working with your snapshots. Another of the new updates to the browser happens right here within the iTunes setting. So here, let me expand it. As you can see, we can still look at the iTunes library the way we used to. But now Torque reads any of the playlists that were created within iTunes. And that is very useful. Another addition to the browser in Torque 2.0 is the introduction of crates. Crates are ways for us to organize a group of songs. In this case, I have a crate called Club Music, and within this crate, I have another crate called Club Hip Hop and Electro. So as you can see, I can have a crate within a crate, giving me more options to organize my songs. Now, a playlist on the other hand is more like a set list that you create in advance. You can rearrange the order of the songs to make sure that you play them in that particular order. At the same time, Torque is keeping track of everything I play since I launched the application. We can see here that there is something called Session Playlist, and it has a date after it. So when I click on it, it shows all of the tracks that I have played this particular day. And this comes very handy because let's just say that you are at home practicing and you realize that something really cool happened in the middle of the set maybe two or three of the songs mixed together perfectly, well, you can go back and find out what they were. Additionally, if somebody ever asks you for the playlist from a gig, maybe you were performing at a club a few nights back and they need to have the playlist in order to check any licenses. The playlists are saved in M3U format, so you can just go back and look at the playlist from the night that you were at the club and send that playlist to them. They'll have all the information they need. And lastly, we've added a few features when in maximized browser view. So when I bring my browser to full screen, I can still see the activity on all of my decks. I can see the name of the song, the artist, and here below on the waveform overview, I can see the position of the song. Now, as always, when the song is about to end, I still get that visual warning. The deck starts flashing when there's 30 seconds left of the track. Here below, we now have the sampler, but you can hide it to increase the browser's real estate. Here I still have my song preview section where I can select the track, preview it in my QMix, and scrub through the song. This is my search and my ignore field. To learn more about the browser in Tor 2.0 and to download the 30 day trial, visit avid.com forward slash Tor trial. Thanks for watching.